Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Random, unintentional thinking, like what you do when your mind wanders, happens in a different part of the brain than intentional thoughts. And too much mind wandering is bad for you, and it makes you more anxious and unhappy. Here's how that works. The part of the brain that is responsible for mind wandering is called the default mode network. It's actually several brain structures in the lower part of your brain that all communicate with each other to form a network. It's kind of like they're in a group chat. When you're not actively thinking about something, your brain's default state is to think about things from the past and some things from the present. Letting your mind wander in this way is called stimulus-independent thought. It's like having the television on or a video running in the background that you're not really paying attention to, but it still fills your mental space. When you turn your attention to something, the default mode turns off while your mind processes the intentional thoughts. And this is a process that goes back and forth throughout the day. If you have anxiety, you are someone who has an overactive default mode. The kinds of things that you think about are not nice, creative productions or problem solving it tends to be more self-critical and judgmental. And this is the mechanism behind rumination and intrusive thoughts. Some rumination is intentional and you can purposely run things over and over in your mind, but rumination is usually negative. And where do you get the negative material from? From your default mode. It's like you can be busy doing something and then the moment that you're not mentally occupied, your mind says, hey, what about that time your brother cheated you out of money? Wasn't that awful? Yeah, it sure was. I can't stand him now. Then your phone rings and interrupts that thinking. When you get off the phone, your mind says, yeah, that was really wrong, wasn't it? It sure was. And there you are, back on it again. Intrusive thoughts work a little differently. They can still be triggered by the default mode, but they have more of a quality of being forced upon you. With the ruminations, it's like you have this person over here saying, Hey, 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 your brother. Your brother was wrong, right? But the intrusive thoughts are like, your brother stole from you. What you gonna do? Not everyone gets intrusive thoughts. We tend to see them triggered by traumatic memories or obsessive compulsive disorder. One research study on the default mode network estimated that 47% of people spend their waking hours thinking about something other than what they're doing. And this mind wandering typically makes them unhappy. As I mentioned, some people are more predisposed to having this active default mode network, whether it be in the form of negative ruminations or intrusive thoughts. But the good news is your default mode responds to neuroplasticity changes. So you can change your hardwiring to improve your mental experiences. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to remodel itself in response to new experiences. Think of the nerves in your brain as a complex electrical circuit where the wires or nerves all link together. In an electrical circuit, you need the wires to connect securely to each other in order to pass the signal along the path. Anxiety, depression, and inflammation weaken these nerve connections in the parts of the brain that override the default mode. So what improves neuroplasticity in the parts of the brain that can keep your default mode in check? Antidepressant medications, if you have depression or anxiety, and your diet. I talk in other videos about how magnesium, curcumin, and intermittent fasting all improve neuroplasticity. Meditation is also a powerful way to get control over your thoughts and keep the default mode turned off. If you think about it, drifting off into default mode thinking is the opposite of being mindful and present. Meditation is like engaging in a fitness program for your brain. Learning to control what you're thinking about builds up a mental muscle that protects you against anxiety and depressive ruminations. It takes work to keep your mind focused on something in the present. And if you're not in the habit of meditation, a simple exercise that you can do to get you started with this is called the body scan. All you have to do is systematically focus on different parts of your body. You could start with your feet and move up to your head and down your arms to your hands. When you do it, engage all of your senses in the observation. For example, if you start with your feet, you would take notice of how they feel. Is any material touching them? Are they pressing against the floor? Are they warm or cold? Can you smell anything emanating from them? Then you move to your lower legs. If you're not practiced with this, your mind will wander. When it does, 
you simply bring your attention back to the body part that you were on. You don't want to fly through this, but it could be as basic as a 10 minute exercise. The exercise builds attentional control which helps you focus on and appreciate your present experience. And we know from research that people who spend more time in the present experience have less anxiety and more life satisfaction. One other thing that reduces default mode activity, and that is the psychedelics. I know it's all good. Psychedelics are a class of drugs that generate altered mental states and hallucinogenic experiences. Some of them were used back in the 60s and 70s to assist with psychotherapy before they were eventually banned from legal use. Currently, only ketamine is FDA approved for medical use. In psychiatry, ketamine is used for treatment resistant depression, but the race is on on studying others like MDMA, also known as ecstasy, psilocybin or mushrooms, mescaline, which is the active ingredient in the peyote cactus, LSD, which is a synthetic compound, and DMT, which is the active ingredient in a drink called ayahuasca. MDMA and psilocybin are the closest to coming to market as FDA approved drugs. And I've seen estimates as early as 2023 for MDMA. So you just gotta hold on one more year. MDMA is in the final trials for use in therapy for post-traumatic stress disorder. But here's why the psychedelics are all the rage now. Clinical trials have shown that these substances treat mental disorders fast and usually with one or two doses. But also many people in the studies reported that the drugs change their life perspective and help them feel more connected to others. Their internal negativity was purged and stayed that way for months after the doses. Where does this magic come from? Researchers believe that it has to do with psychedelics changing your default mode and decreasing ruminations. It's like the negative script just gets deleted. We still have a few years to get there, but if you don't wanna take something mind altering, you can alter it yourself with meditation and diet. It will take longer, but they are interventions that are within your control. Take a look at this video, comparing the effects of meditation to relaxation exercises, and this one on intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.